Our goal at PYD is to create a world where young people with disabilities are able to live with dignity and pride in who they are and lead self-determined lives filled with purpose. And the way we make this happen is we build the skills and abilities of young people with disabilities, as well as increasing the inclusivity of workplaces, organizations, and communities. Now, that might not seem like a revolutionary idea. However, upon our founding 36 years ago, five years before the Americans with Disabilities Act, it certainly was. And when you review today's national landscape, when you look at the data and you see disparities between individuals with disabilities and those without, as it pertains to educational attainment, labor force participation, incarceration rates, we argue the job is not done. Our mission is still ahead of us, and it's more critical now, perhaps than ever, to invest in mentoring, career readiness, theater arts, organizational capacity building, and workforce training as an inclusion strategy. And the why for us is simple. In the United States, one in five people identify as having a disability. So at PYD, our premise is that if you are working with youth, clients, customers, employees, you are working with individuals with disabilities. And people with disabilities, they are students, customers, co-workers, participants in every agency, in every organization, in every institution, whether their disability is visible or not, whether they are aware of them or not, or whether they have chosen to disclose them or not. Yet, most staff don't have the training and information that would help them to be most effective at creating an inclusive environment where everyone can fully engage and thrive. Let's change that together. It is my distinct honor to welcome you tonight to Party for PYD 2021. And what a remarkable program we have for you tonight. We are thrilled to be celebrating our youth, their strengths and abilities and resilience in the face of just unprecedented times. In addition, really excited to be celebrating with our partners and collaborators who continue to dedicate their time and effort towards our broader mission. We have tremendous talent for you this evening, our entertainment with Sarah Martin and PYD's own Anthony Pezos. And so it is now, without further ado, my distinct pleasure to kick it over to our MCs, PYD's Austin Carr and the Carson and Kennedy Show's Mix 104.1's Kennedy Elsie. Hi everyone. Um, my good good evening, and thank you for joining us. My name is my name is Austin Tar, and I've been involved with PYD for about five years as a as a participant, an intern, and a, a volunteer. I am excited for you to join us tonight. And I and, am and thrilled to introduce my, my friend and mentor, Kennedy LC from the morning show on this 1041. Kennedy has been a mentor to me in several ways a strong community supporter. And, and she has helped me host my own radio podcast at Radio Parking. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce to you my great friend and mentor, Kennedy Elsie. Well, hi, Austin. It is a thrill to be back here with you. I, I hate that we're virtual again this year, but got to keep it safe. Um, I'm looking forward to the time I can actually see you and hug your face. Yes, it's been so long. It is an absolute honor to be standing beside you this evening. So yeah. thank you for inviting me back. All right. <laughs> thank, uh, thank you, Kennedy, for being here tonight. It is a pleasure 
gives you always virtual reality. Let's be honest. I, I know we're probably wishing is in person. I know I do. But this will have to do for at least this year. The, the good news is all the money you say, we say not parking. <laughs> now you can fund our meeting and fund our transformative programming. So tell me, you've been involved with PYD um, since 2018. What's one thing that you learned since you've been involved with the PYD community? Community. You are a force of unstoppable beings is what you are. Like nothing, nothing stops you from doing anything you want to do. And that's, uh, that's given me inspiration in my life and the, and the amazing people that I've been able to meet through you and through PYD um, has enriched my life greatly. So I, I'm so thankful that you brought me into this world. Thank you, thank you, Kennedy. We are so happy that you are here tonight and part of the PYD family. Kennedy will be here to fill not only your, not only your heart as she did mine, but hopefully a few of your dollars too. And everyone get ready for an amazing night. Kennedy, over to you. Thank you, Austin. I'm just so excited to be here with all of you tonight. Who would have thought a year ago we would be gathering again virtually, but here we are, and we're not gonna let that dampen our spirits, are we? We have got an amazing night lined up for you at this year's party for PYD. Tonight we are here to celebrate PYD, our legends and awardees, the community we serve, and the community of partners that help us do just that. We are honoring three incredible champions of youth with disabilities. Our legends honorees are Margaret Covell, the president of the board of directors for PYD, an over 20 year volunteer, and Paul Grogan, president of the Boston Foundation, an initial funder of PYD over 35 years ago. Tonight we also celebrate Keisha Graves, our Oswald Mundahar Innovation Award recipient. Keisha is the owner of clothing boutique Girls Chronically Rock, Massachusetts State Ambassador for the Muscular Dystrophy Association, and valued partner of PYD's Career Readiness Program. Tonight, we're also debuting four program profiles that not only describe PYD's programming, but also address its impact on youth, including education and skill building, fighting social isolation, and building an inclusive world. Now, let's look at the power of mentoring. Mentoring has been the flagship program of PYD since its inception in 1985. Young people with disabilities were often excluded from other mentoring programs and didn't have a role model that looked like them, facing the same challenges and obstacles. They didn't see successful people with disabilities with educational degrees or careers or independent lives, and PYD changed that. Mentoring is important because uh, at the heart of our humanity is our connection to each other. Mentoring is at the core of all that we do at PYD. And the reason is that relationships matter. Mentoring has many benefits. We have seen that mentored youth have a more positive attitude towards school. They have an increase in self-esteem. They improve their communication skills and ability to speak up for themselves, their ability to advocate. They also are more connected to the community. We know that relationship uh, makes a difference in terms of outcomes for young adults and youth with disabilities. Those relationships that provide role modeling and provide that caring individual who can be your champion um, during hard times and victories. We've been we've been doing this thing pretty consistently for the last four years. Um, 
and I feel like Amy's been an integral part of my my success in high school, and she'll continue to be a big part of my life. With a mentor, I feel more comfortable talking about things that happen. Mentoring for PYD has been a great experience. I initially joined because I identify as disabled, and it was important for me to show disabled representation in mentorship and leadership. Some of my favorite moments, specifically more, are, I guess would be that now that PYD is this old, we get, have mentors that have grown up and now are in their 30s and 40s, and they're giving back. So it's being passed on. I think all of us can look back at a time in our lives where we either were striving towards a goal or we were struggling, and we can point to who was our mentor during that time. There is something very powerful about representation. When you see the way in which that young person can see the possibility for themselves and an adult who has the same disability, it's not that we always have to match this way, but man, is it powerful, and I've just seen that time and time again. PYD really made an important effort to match me with the right mentor. She also has a disability herself, but she is a big role model in my life. When I matched my mentee, it was such a great experience. Um, we connected, in addition, our mothers connected over having disabled children, and it really felt like this ingrained I mean, nothing we found PYD when my son was about 15, 16 years old, and he participated in a peer mentoring program and was partnered with a college sophomore at the time who really got him and taught him so much about life and friendship. He even went to her wedding. And we are so lucky to be matched with each other. It started as a very structured, traditional match where we set goals with each other, we and we celebrated each other's achievements, we talked every week, we saw each other once a month. And since then, our relationship has just grown so much and turned this into this really organic friendship, relationship, support system that we know we can celebrate each other. We know that this friendship is gonna last moving forward and that we can rely on each other. We know innately in our hearts that mentoring matters and we've seen in PYD's program outcomes that it makes a significant difference for young people with disabilities when they're meeting their goals. And something that I've seen for mentors, mentees, and families is that Although it starts in a very structured relationship, it often can transform into something where the mentor is like family to the mentee and to the family members. And so that's really wonderful to see. I wouldn't have had those opportunities if I had never never gotten in touch with PYD, if I had never been connected with PYD back in middle school. Um, it feels so long ago, but honestly, at the same time, it feels like just yesterday that I had met Amy, so this time has flown by, and I just want to thank Amy for sticking along for the ride. Mentor, she's a friend, like a very close friend, and I'm grateful for that. There is nothing like mentoring and role modeling to change the life of a young person with a disability. I think we just really wanted to thank PYD for, for bringing us together. I think PYD and, and this relationship, this match has truly changed my life. And, um, and I really don't know kind of what this would look like without the past four years working with PYD. Um, it definitely spurred me to do that Lend Fellowship, like Tom mentioned, which is a professional training program re related to um, interdisciplinary healthcare fields and uh, disability and specifically neurodevelopmental disability. And it's truly been a, a guiding factor in my life. So thank you so much for bringing us together. Welcome to tonight's party for PYD. Here we are again, virtually. While so much has changed over this past year, we have continued to support our mission and our youth. I'm here with Jay and I'm excited to tell you about the evening. So Regina, this has been a tough year for everyone. Tell us what and why are we celebrating tonight? We are celebrating how our youth have persevered. They've grown, they got jobs, they made connections. We need to celebrate these successes. I'm really excited to see that PYD today has been shaped 
how it's been shaped by the last few months. We can adapt and be flexible. We're an organization with history, but we were able to write a new future. Regina, what are we looking forward to tonight? So many things. I am excited most of all, as I always am, to see our youth, to see them share their stories, their talent, their experiences. That is always the highlight for me. I'm excited about seeing the mentors and their experiences and what they enjoy about the mentoring experience. And parents, I love to see how we completely and in so many ways are a support for the parent community. I'm excited about our collaborators. We would be nothing without some of the wonderful collaborators that we work together with to work in concert to build more for the organization's outcomes. And I'm so excited about our honorees, how wonderful each one is and how they uniquely bring and elevate services to youth with disabilities. That's wonderful, Regina. Who do you want to thank tonight? So many to thank. Thankful for our honorees. I'm thankful for our community and how we've come together. So thankful for this year that has brought us closer in many ways. I'm thankful for our staff. What a tremendous staff. We would truly be nothing without the dedication, commitment, and service-driven staff of PYD. I'm so grateful for our board. We have a stellar board. In the past year, few board meetings have been without everyone there, participating, contributing, working together to guide, to advise, to contribute both financially and in many other ways to the support of this organization. I want to thank our tremendous supporters for, P for PYD, particularly tonight. So many gave on a significant sponsor level. Thank you for anyone that could give on any level. We're grateful, we're humbled, we're honored. Thank you for helping PYD bring its magic to deserving you. I take the pleasure of uh, thanking the board for stepping up this year. You've been really impactful and purposeful in your commitment. And in the year of difficulties, you have stepped up and delivered. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your collaboration. Thank you for your contribution and gifts. And on top of all, thank you for your commitment. Thank you, Regina. I'm certainly looking forward to all we have in store tonight. I love PYD. It was an organization I didn't know anything about until I met that young man you saw at the top of the show here, Austin Carr, who introduced me to the amazing people involved with PYD. And I will tell you one thing, you've never met a challenge you can't overcome. And that is just truly inspirational. And I think of that every day. Now, we're going to hear from another longtime supporter of PYD. It is my pleasure to announce tonight's first Legends honoree, Paul Grogan, president of the Boston Foundation. The Boston Foundation is well known here in Boston and beyond for their extreme generosity in funding Massachusetts organizations that tackle social issues and inequities. For over a hundred years, as one of the nation's oldest and largest community foundations, they have been at a center of overlapping partnerships and networks working together to make life better for everyone in our region. The Boston Foundation has been a strong and valued supporter of PYD since the beginning of our 35 year history as an initial funder. Paul Grogan has been at the helm of the Boston Foundation for over 20 years and this and he will be retiring this month. During his tenure, Paul has been an advocate for PYD and people with disabilities, realizing the inequity realizing the inequities and challenges and obstacles so many youth with disabilities face. Under Paul's guidance, gains for young people with disabilities were made in every area, including affordable and accessible housing, policy, mentoring, 
job readiness, inclusion, education, community, and advocacy. Paul's commitment to young people with disabilities has been steadfast. He is a champion for their empowerment and inclusion. Congratulations, Paul. Thank you for your contributions to youth with disabilities. Good evening. My name is Paul Grogan, and I'm the president of the Boston Foundation. And it is my great pleasure to welcome all of you to this special evening as we honor and celebrate the work of Partners for Youth with Disabilities. I'm six foot two. I have gray hair and a gray beard that I just grew very recently to see how it looked. Tonight, uh, I'm wearing a blue blazer, which is a frequent costume, although I think I have forgotten how to tie a tie. I have been at the Boston Foundation for, for 20 years. My career has been all about urban development and opportunity uh, for disadvantaged and low-income people. And I've just been very lucky to work at a place like the Boston Foundation, which brings so much to the, the fight for opportunity uh, that people are having. Boston Foundation is here to build a vital and prosperous city in which justice and opportunity is available to all. And that's a personal commitment of mine and a commitment of our organization. Boston Foundation was the initial seed funder for PYD. And they've stayed with us through all these years. And Paul and his commitment to individuals with disabilities has given through their foundation funding year over year to ensure that our organization thrives. Partners for Youth with Disabilities has been a great organization and a great partner to the Boston Foundation for a very long time. This is an organization that we have supported literally from its beginning in the 80s. They are an indispensable organization that has made it so much easier for those with disabilities to find opportunity in some times our, our harsh environments. One of the things that's so special about Partners is the way they turned on a dime, pivoted to meet the tremendous new challenges of the pandemic. Just think of how it affected all of us in a negative way and double, triple, quintuple that for those with disabilities. So it was incredibly important that partners had the resources and the support and the backing to, to step up their game and make sure that the suffering was at a minimum for the whole disabilities uh, community. I realize I'm getting an award this evening. I don't feel that I deserve it. I'm very humbled by that, and, and uh, I'll try to live up to that uh, in, in the days ahead. Thanks again for being with us tonight and for making me part of this evening. It's a great, great honor. Thank you. The Boston Foundation has been an incredible partner to PYD, and you can too. You can empower youth with disabilities to live with dignity, purpose, and pride. So please donate any amount you can and bid generously on the auction items to provide youth with disabilities opportunities to reach their full potential. It's easy to give, no matter which way you choose. You can click the Donate Now button, Give at uh, you could go to give.pyd.org as well, text PYD to 56651, or you can scan the QR code on your screen with your camera app, you know, like you're out and you're going to get the menu. <laughs> PYD programming has changed the lives of youth with disabilities, like my good friend Austin, but it wouldn't be possible without you. Your gift to PYD is an investment in inclusion, an investment in community, an investment in a youth. Your $1,000 gift today will sustain a match between a caring adult mentor and a young, young mentee with a disability, providing them a role model, a confidant, and a friend. I would love to see those relationships happen today, and your $1,000 will do it, so donate now. I'll wait. For $500, you can help an organization become more inclusive through PYD Learn, the inclusion training and support platform that empowers the organizations to engage more youth with disabilities in their programming. Think of the exponential impact that could have nationwide. $500, donate now. A gift of $250 funds an Access to Theater workshop. Guys, if you haven't seen the Access to Theater shows yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. They're amazing. Young people can express themselves through the arts, increase social skills, and gain confidence. $250 to help a child and youth gain confidence? Like, we can do this, right? Right now you can do it. Do it. 
And $100 will provide youth access to a job shadow where they'll learn about different jobs available in a number of industries and the skills needed to be successful. Job shadows are continuing through the pandemic. This is important work. And the PYD staff has created video job shadows so youth can still experience tours from the safety of their own home. Please give what you can, all donations, any amount make a difference and they are appreciated but the ones with lots of zeros behind them make a bigger difference as you click on the donate button or give through text austin is back to introduce our first entertainer austin thank you tanity uh, now i want to introduce my great friend sarah martin she she is the nashville retouring retouring artist performer singer songwriter Sarah Martin, and she has a new song coming out this summer called Those Days, and, and now here she is. We have a special treat with, for you tonight. Here she is, sitting those days, um, Sarah Martin. How's it going everybody? Sarah Martin here. I am going to sing you guys a song that I will be releasing this year. It's called Those Days. And it's about those days that are just really hard that you just gotta keep on pushing through to get to the next one. There are days life don't seem fair. You're down inside and feeling like nobody cares. I take one more step you're beat down, dog tired And you're trying your best Thinking life's a test But you're always walking the wild There are days There are days When the light is bright But the sun ain't shining your way There are days There are days When it hurts to lose it's up to you to push on through those days. Cause there are days that this world seems cold and a young soul and hopeful heart feels tired and old. Cause every now I look at my left hand It rocked a diamond once but the shine wore off And it never got the wedding band And there are days, there are days When the light is bright but the sun ain't shining your way And there are days, there are days When it hurts to lose it's always up to you Thanks for listening, guys. Have a great night. Good evening, everyone. Boston City Councilor Michelle Wu here. 
It's wonderful to see you at tonight's virtual party for PYD. I wanted to take a moment to say thank you to all the staff, volunteers, mentors, and community members supporting partners for youth with disabilities. Your work, especially during such a difficult year, has changed lives and continues to open doors. I'm so grateful to everyone here tonight for your support of this incredible organization and the amazing young people you support. Congratulations to all the legends and innovators being celebrated tonight. And on behalf of the city of Boston, thank you so much. Our program is an inclusive job readiness program for transition age youth with disabilities. We're preparing them for employment, post-secondary education, and independent living. This was over 20 years ago, more. We started career readiness and it took on a huge life of its own. And it just was tremendous to again hit another target area for these young people. Not only could they have a mentor, but they could be ready for the world of work. It's been really awesome to have um, such powerful conversations with young voices um, about their um, achievements and their dreams. Our career readiness program is really important. It's directly in line with PYD's mission to enable youth with disabilities to lead self-determined lives filled with dignity, pride, and purpose. I joined PYD's pre-ETS program about a year ago. My training workshops focus on pre-employment counseling, career path exploration, and self advocacy With the help of Medi and Olivia, my career readiness program specialists, I have been given comprehensive and specific goals to support my learning and preparation for career development. We at PYD are the proud hosts of the Youth Leadership Forum, a conference for young adults and youth with disabilities held annually in Massachusetts and in other states across the country. And in partnership with a tremendous group of collaborators, we're working with YLF participants to build leadership skills and leave better prepared for future employment, higher education, and independent living. They want to tell me I had a participant who said because of ATT and learning how to do um, the communication, I was able to do my job interview because ATT taught me how to say what I feel and, and also show my skills and explain my disability in a way that is not a hindrance but a positive. The head of the group, the wonderful Ms. Maureen Infinity, say that one of the things they like to work on in ATT is self-advocacy skills. So I think doing a full year of ATT in person really helped boost up my self-advocacy skills. It's really important for both the employers and, you know, the country nationwide to see the value of having people with disabilities in the workforce. It's, you know, we're bringing different talents and skills and abilities into the workforce and our programs like ours are preparing students with those skills so that they're ready. But employers and both small and large organizations are seeing that positive impact in all of the work that's being done. He was a shy guy at the start and um, PYD gave him experiences that were really key and um, to unlock his social and now his professional interests. So these days, he's working in the field of disabilities um, as well, and he hopes to make contributions uh, to a better world for other youth and young adults with disabilities too. When our stories reflect the people and communities we serve, we're better able to live our mission and values. Um, people with disabilities are part of our community and add value uh, to our teams. Thanks to PYD, I'm more confident in building my proficiency, capabilities, and skills through performing training activities such as mock interviews and watching virtual job shadow videos. I have a greater understanding of what it takes to perform well and deliver for my best possible outcome. People with disabilities can work and want to work. And they're devoted workers. To train them in their transition years of particularly late high school for the world of work is something PYD started over 20 years ago. And now, in fact, it's a major national theme. Over the course of the multi-day conference, YLF participants engage 
in both small and large group discussions and workshops on a wide range of topics that include self-advocacy, disability pride, independent living, career exploration, higher education, legislative advocacy, and the disability rights movement. We're really excited that our career readiness program has now taken off beyond just the greater Boston area. And we do this through our replication model. So in order to have this larger impact, what we do is partner with organizations, schools across the country. We provide them with our career readiness curriculum, training, resources, technical support from PYD staff to deliver the program at their sites. We're currently doing this in seven states across the country and look forward to doing it in many more as we keep growing. Career readiness uh, basically made me see that there are different kinds of jobs that I could do and some of them are very interesting. So some of the big obvious successes that we see is when a student receives a job offer for a job they were really hoping for or they start a job or tell us about how great something's going based on what they've learned in our program. I'm going to be attending Merrimack College next year. I just committed to that school a couple of days ago. Um, I was a Denny's scholarship winner. I was a Denny's Hungry for Education scholarship winner through PYD, and I'll be majoring in communications and going on to the uh, dream chapter of the college, which is disability rights, education, advocacy, and mentorship. So that ties a lot into the PYD program, and I feel like if it weren't for PYD, I probably wouldn't even be doing that. So thanks for PYD. You are changing my life. How incredible to hear the impact that career readiness has had on youth and families and bringing diversity to the workplace. One of the leading creators of PYD's career readiness program is Oz Mondehar. Oz has a long history with PYD as a supporter, champion, and friend. He is a founding mentor at PYD with particular focus on entrepreneurship and employment for youth with disabilities. And this year, the Innovation Award has been renamed the Oswald Mondehar Innovation Award after the first ever recipient of the award last year. Oz is the Senior Vice President of Mission and Advocacy for Spalding Rehabilitation Network, the Post-Acute Care Services of Mass General Brigham, and most recently, Oz co-created Job Lab, which focuses on bringing organizations, including PYD, together, building collaborations and breaking down barriers for employment for youth with disabilities. Housed at Spalding Hospital Cambridge, Job Lab is a vibrant space where youth with disabilities can receive training and get the skills needed to provide them with opportunities and then connect them with companies for employment opportunities. Oz served on the advisory committee on increasing competitive integrated employment for individuals with disabilities during the Obama administration, bringing a voice to youth with disabilities on the national level. He is internationally recognized for his expertise on accessibility, disability rights, and workplace accommodation serves on several nonprofit boards and as an advisor to others. Oz is here tonight to present the Oswald Mondehar Innovation Award to an individual who exemplifies innovation and creativity in finding solutions to challenges facing young people with disabilities. Hello friends, it's great to be with you tonight. I am deeply honored to have the PYD Innovator Award bear my name. I am passionate about opening doors and providing employment opportunities for people with disabilities. I know the skills and diversity we bring to the workforce are of value to our colleagues and the organizations that hire us. The perspectives and experience that we develop from overcoming barriers and creatively finding solutions makes us an asset to any employer. It's just smart business. As I see it, people with disabilities are the original innovators. Every day we face challenges that we need to overcome, and we do so by being resourceful, thinking of new ways to navigate a world that may not be designed for us. The spirit of innovation is why I'm so proud of my long friendship with PYD, its founder, Regina Snowden, its amazing staff, and its dedicated board of directors. They are also innovators. They see the possibility and promise of investing in you. I am grateful for our loved ones as well our friends, our families, our partners, those that believe in us, they are our champions. And I owe my family so much. Innovating is as individual as it is about a team. And I am very honored and proud to be on your team. 
In addition to the award, I'm excited to announce the inaugural Osman Dahar Innovation Grant to be awarded to a young entrepreneur with disabilities who exemplifies a spirit of innovation, persistence, and inspiration. Entrepreneurship provides young people with disabilities with an outlet to express themselves. They gain valuable skills, confidence, that not only benefit their career, but their lives. A Cambridge, Massachusetts native, Keisha obtained a bachelor's degree in fashion design and master's degree in business management. In graduate school at age 24, Keisha was diagnosed with limb girdle muscular dystrophy, a form of MD that affects limbs and shoulders down to the legs, which progresses over time. This inspired her to create Girls Chronically Rock, Keisha has been a strong partner with PYD with similar visions for inclusion and empowerment for youth with disabilities. She has been a mentor, a guest lecturer in the Career Readiness Program and hosted PYD's first virtual intern last summer. Keisha aims to constantly educate others, eradicate stigmas and encourage those with chronic illnesses to continue to be their authentic, beautiful and confident selves each and every day. She is a true innovator, and it's my pleasure to introduce Keisha Graves. Hi, I am Keisha. I am African American. I am female. I go by she, her. I am wearing a black t-shirt with my logo on it, Girls Chronically Rock, which is pink, black, and gray. I'm also wearing a head tie on my head with multiple colors, green, blue, and pink. My business, Girls Chronically Rock, was founded in 2017 by myself because I was diagnosed with muscular dystrophy in 2009 when I was actually in graduate school receiving my master's degree. So I didn't know what my future hold or what was going to happen, but I always had a passion for fashion. So I figured, let me start to create a t-shirt line that kind of expresses my emotions of what I'm going through on a daily basis. So I wanted to create something to help inspire and motivate others in the disability community. So now I am creating adaptive, accessible clothing for people with disabilities to help us get dressed on an easier basis because it's a hassle for us. Just to get dressed alone to put on a t-shirt takes a long time. So something with adaptive, accessible clothing and to make us get dressed independently, but most importantly, to feel confident in our own skin. I am so emotional that PYD thought of to honor me. When I first got that email, I'm like, really? You want to honor me? So I'm still so emotional and touched and it warms my heart that they wanted to recognize me and honor me for this wonderful award. We're so grateful for our partnership with Keisha Graves and Girls Chronically Rock. Since we started working with Keisha, she has delivered numerous guest speaking events for our students, both in person and virtually. During these guest speaker events, Keisha shares her story. She talks about her clothing line, Girls Chronically Rock, and talks about what it's like to be an entrepreneur. She is inspirational, she motivates our students, she shares that you may face obstacles, but it's still so important to keep working towards your goals. And that motivation has had such a positive impact on many of our students. Additionally, we're so appreciative of Keisha because she willingly and enthusiastically took on our first virtual intern at the start of the pandemic, really. And she was willing to take this on and work with us and it was such a positive experience for everyone. My brand alone is based upon like, you know, promoting and helping inspire and motivate others in the disability community. So what other than an intern that has a disability because they connect and relate to my brand? My PYD interns were amazing. They helped me promote and advertise Girls Chronically Rock on social media. We did different blog postings. And I was so grateful that PYD offered that opportunity for me because I wouldn't have been able to afford an internship otherwise. PYD is special because they bring us all together and they make us feel welcome. They bring such great awareness to the disability community. And there's just an awesome, awesome foundation to lean on. And I think PYD and Girls Chronically Rock are going to take over. Wow, Keisha is inspirational. You can empower youth with disabilities to explore their own entrepreneurial side with a donation to PYD. This year's party for PYD includes over 60 incredible auction items, from sports memorabilia to travel experiences to amazing baskets. We've got some incredible local getaways, which is just what the doctor ordered after a year of social isolation, right? To Woodstock, Vermont, Cape Cod, or if you really want to get away, enjoy the white sands and blue waters of Daytona Beach, baby. Perhaps you're ready to truly relax and live in luxury for a week at your own private home, complete with staff, 
for you and seven guests in Mexico. Yes, please. Or maybe you want to be part of the action. Travel to Churchill Downs and cheer on your favorite horse as they run for the roses in the iconic Kentucky Derby. Maybe nature's more your style. In that case, you won't want to miss the opportunity to see one of nature's greatest light shows, the Northern Lights in Yukon, Canada. And there's some incredible items for foodies, including 12 bottles of classic Tuscany red wine shipped to your home, or virtual cooking classes with a top chef. Check out the signed sports memorabilia from Kemba Walker, Tom Brady, James White, and David Ortiz, and Bobby Orr. Plus, tickets to a Red Sox-Yankees game and the New England Revolution. Or you can improve your swing with a Callaway Maverick men's driver. There's also gorgeous jewelry and accessories, a brewery tour, lots of great local items. So, Kennedy, how do I bid? Well, let me tell you. Click on the auction button at the give.pyd. Dot org. It's just below me, I think. The auction ends on May 17th at 9 p.m., so you need to get those bids in and keep the donations coming in. You can change the lives of youth with disabilities. Click the Donate Now button right up here at give.pyd.org. Text PYD to 56651 or scan the QR code on your screen with your camera app. I'm waiting. You can do it. I'll just wait real quick because I know you want to get in on that action, auction, action, auction, action. Woo, that's a mouthful. Now I'd like to introduce to you our planning committee, Chair Jay Krish, to share a message from the PYD board and share why PYD is important to him. We celebrate tonight the youth, the community, and the partners coming together for a worthy cause. So people ask me, how have PYD be able to impact the social isolation our, our youth face. Um, and to that I answer, I've seen PYD adapt, be flexible, be nimble to the changing climate. Uh, we have been able to uh, deliver quality content, uh, not only to the youth in our community, but also pave the way for the community at large. Um, we have been in the forefront of mentoring and it's been reflected by our partners and other organizations in the National Disability Mentoring Coalition. I see some great things coming from BYD this year and I'm looking forward for the next. My name is Kristen McCosh and I'm the Disability Commissioner for the City of Boston. I'm thrilled to be joining you tonight virtually from Boston City Hall for the annual Partners for Youth with Disabilities Gala. We're here tonight to celebrate all the great work that PYD does, fostering strong bonds between adult mentors and youth with disabilities. When I was growing up as a young woman with a disability, programs like PYD didn't exist. I didn't have a lot of strong role models with disabilities to look up to. I wasn't connected to any adults who looked like me or who understood the types of challenges I was facing. My journey in life would have been made so much easier if only I had a program like PYD to help me build confidence and realize that I could do anything I set my mind to. Luckily for everyone in the disability community, we now have programs like PYD to support youth with disabilities, to support children and teens as they transition into adulthood. PYD does such a great job helping to empower youth by connecting them with successful, caring adult mentors. And this is making a real difference. I'm so happy whenever I meet a young woman or a young man who has a disability and they're active in school or work or sports. I can tell they're on their way to leading a full, happy, independent, successful life. They know they can be anything they wanna be. And many of them owe their thanks to PYD. So congratulations on another successful year and have a great evening tonight. What we know is that it's a time where connection is needed more than ever. And we also know that while the rest of society is beginning to open up, many youth with disabilities will need to remain physically distant because of health related conditions. So for us to be adaptive in our programming is extremely important. And to that end, 
During the, the start of the pandemic, we were able to swiftly transition all of our operations online. In COVID, we adapted with our partners, our wonderful collaborators. We adapted for the youth and we adapted with parents individually on what each child needed to have the kind of supports that we had, they had already been given. I mean, with a pandemic, obviously everyone's felt separated. It's been hard to, it's been easy to feel alone, especially with the isolation and the distancing. And because this has been going on for over a year now, but Amy and I's mentorship hasn't really stopped. We've still been doing college. We've still been meeting up, um, socially distanced and safely, of course, but we've kept that connection going and it's made the pandemic feel a lot less isolating and a lot less uh, socially depriving than it would for other people. What Anthony has done uh, for me during COVID, and I don't know if he realizes this, is that he has helped me come out of my shell. We've also seen different successes in times of the COVID-19 pandemic. Some of our students that may have struggled in the classroom live in person with us are actually excelling in a virtual format. PYD programs so far have been thriving since uh, the pandemic. All of these activities were so thrilling. They were really fun, um, informative experiences that helped him gain confidence and gain his voice and really learned how to be his best self-advocate. Access to Theater Arts is an award-winning, inclusive theater program for teens and young adults whose purpose is to develop communication, artistic, and leadership skills, as well as lasting professional and personal relationships. ATT is such a interactive, and the youth gain so much from being together and having that world and that life of magical pretend. And not to be able to do that in an interactive way, we thought, oh. But here we went online with access to theater, and I've been thrilled. The whole thing, and that's, I think, one of the things that makes ATT unique is the whole thing is created by them. I had my doubts when the Zoom theater workshops began and Julia was frequently not attentive online. But little by little, she is changing. She's more interested and willing to participate, and she looks forward to Wednesday evenings and Sunday afternoons. I joined Access the Theater when I was 15 years old. I was shy and scared, but the young teenagers welcomed me. Everyone made me feel happy and comfortable and made me feel like I was part of their family. And I told my mom I found my second home. Being able to do ATT virtually during the, the pandemic has, has been a good experience because it just gives me something to do and I can still connect with folks from ATT virtually. For me, ATT is not just something I teach in, but it's something I grew up in. So for me, I like to see, for me, ATT gave me a voice that I didn't know I didn't have until I came to ATT. It gave me a voice not just in theater, but in advocacy and in the world. I, I like uh, um, was acting out scenes with my friends. Nice to see a, a group of people with disabilities do, doing something that, that I'm passionate about, su such as theater. Oh, for this. Unforeseen time of COVID have ATT has got wonders it has kept me out of depression when this first order. So the main focus of the program is performing arts exploration and experimentation, but really at the core, it's about building community. I think access to theater speaks for itself because I make huge efforts to create the environment. The teaching artists go out of the way to accommodate each participant with their learning styles and other related things they might have just to make them be a part of the group. During this pretty terrible year, looking forward to anything was an incredible blessing. I am so thankful 
for the willingness and enthusiasm of everyone connected with PYD to make theater under these extraordinary circumstances. I'm thankful for the community that you have created. You have helped us weather this time more than you will ever know. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Well, I love he is very creative first and foremost. You do a wonderful job week and week out. And I think some people, when they come to our performances, to be quite honest, they say, oh, Liz, isn't that lovely? They got to do a play. But it's not about the play. It's really not about the end product. We do the end product because they enjoy the end product. They have fun doing the end product and they can see their work. But it's about the process. ATT helped me to open myself, express my feelings, and even my speech and vocabulary started to improve. My experience with PYD is amazing. I it's amazing. I just can't describe it beyond that. Our next honoree has supported our youth and programs for over 20 years, beginning as a volunteer mentor. Margaret Koval witnessed firsthand the joy that youth experienced in PYD programs, particularly access to theater. Realizing a gap in employment opportunities for young people with disabilities, Margaret co-founded the Young Entrepreneurs Program, now called Career Readiness, empowering youth with skills to be competitive in the job market. Margaret joined the board of directors in 2009 and has served as board president for the past eight years. Her leadership has brought innovation and strategy, having guided two social enterprise campaigns from creation to funding. Margaret's vision towards capacity building has provided PYD with the structure to expand nationally and further its mission to thousands of young people with disabilities. Congratulations, Margaret. Thank you for your commitment to PYD. Uh, I'm Margaret Covell. I'm a white female with brown hair that comes down to my shoulders and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Uh, my journey with PYD started probably 25 years ago now. Uh, I was in business school and was looking for a way to connect differently with the community than just go to class and learn about profit and loss. And uh, I was drawn to PYD. I found the organization and the mission really spoke to me about empowering children, children who didn't necessarily always have the opportunity to do things like uh, build a business, act, just connect and be social. So I, I got involved with Making Healthy Connections, which was held every Friday at a church. And it was about that. It was just the kids making healthy connections, socializing, connecting. And then I uh, also was involved in Young Entrepreneurs, which is now Career Readiness. And then the program that was most special to me and has impacted me ever since is the Access to Theater program. ATT, which is Access to Theater, is an opportunity for the kids to be able to come together. They write the, the story together. They uh, do the production, the costumes. Everything is a way for them to connect together and create something. Um, it's the first time that most of the kids have had the chance to be on stage and to be able to explore what it's like to be somebody different and to be out in front of the audience. And um, most transformative for me is just that, is that they're able to be somebody and explore something different. It was transformative for me, and it was transformative for those children. So I ended up joining the board for a very simple reason, which is I spent all this time at business school and then consulting, and I had a lot of skills, and I wanted to do more. I wanted to really impact the organization using those capabilities. So how do we find sustainable funding? How do we really create a more structure in the programming and in the organization altogether. So being part of the board is a way that I can really leverage and utilize those skills. Margaret is the board president who has designed and created social enterprise for PYD, something we did not have. We weren't quite 
sure we had the skill sets to even know how to begin. She had the skill sets. And she would say to me, I remember one time she says, I can't imagine PYD without national impact. And she saw the way to bring more national impact through social enterprise. And I always had a dream that we could become national. I wanted the programs to be available to youth in every city, every state in the United States. And now fast forward to today, PYD is the home of the National Disability Mentoring Coalition. And that's an organization that brings together over 300 organizations, individuals, and corporations that are all focused on one mission, which is to bring a more inclusive environment for youth with disabilities. Your donation tonight will ensure programming for young people with disabilities remains strong, including the access to theater and career readiness programs that Margaret spoke about. Even more youth will have the opportunity to express themselves through theater arts, gaining confidence and friendship. Your gift can help young people with disabilities learn skills to be competitive in the job market or match them with a mentor and role model to guide them toward an independent life. There are many ways to donate. I'm going to say them again in case you forgot. Donate now button just above this, give.pyd.org. Text PYD to 56651 or scan that QR code with your camera app. Now, I am excited to introduce this talented musician and PYD youth, Anthony Pezos. Anthony created an original piece of music for Party for PYD. Get ready to move to the beat.
at PYD, I work with other organizations to help them make their practices more inclusive of people with disabilities. This involves doing trainings, audits, consulting, going with organizations and really trying to help them rethink disability and what that, what that means in the context of the organization. From PYD, I've learned a lot, I think, about the range of different challenges that folks can face um, with disabilities. And there's ways in which we can make that a comfortable experience for people, no matter what those challenges are. NDMC is part of PYD's national initiatives. The idea of having mentoring as a fundamental component of a disability inclusion strategy should be at the forefront of the national discussion. Frankly, we live in a deeply ableist world still, with structures, both physical built structures and social structures that aren't designed to meet the needs of people with disabilities, that actively exclude people with disabilities from those spaces. And so unless we're working to break down those barriers as well, then we're not gonna be able to provide our young people with disabilities with those lives of dignity, pride, and purpose. Inclusion, training, and how PYD edifies and trains and makes companies, our trainees, ready and welcoming to include persons with disabilities within their entities is one of the more powerful experience that PYD is bringing on a national level. As a whole ERG, we've learned a number of things from such a great partnership with PYD. One of the most important being the power of inclusivity and the passion for others, especially during such unprecedented times like a national health pandemic. We began to dream how mentoring programs around the state could learn from PYD. We started working on that and we did that at the state level and we've expanded even more now nationally to the National Mentoring Center for Disabilities. The mission at the National Disability Mentoring Coalition is to raise awareness about the importance and impact of mentoring in the lives of people with disabilities. I'm here because my colleague and I have been taking the PYD offered course so that we can earn our certification in disability mentoring. I have found that there have been some lessons that are so eye-opening that I could say they have made me a better person and how I interact with people. The realization that a lot of systems in school, work, and day-to-day -day life are the things that have been disabling and problematic rather than disabled people being the issue is very simple, but it's just a matter of taking courses such as those provided by PYD to ensure that our communities know how to make sure that people with invisible and visible disabilities feel welcomed all the time. The spirit of generosity, the expansive understanding of identity, and the dismantling consistent and persistent dismantling of the barriers that prevent full participation. That's what's at the heart of the partnership with PYD. Our partnerships are really essential for our programming. No one can do it alone. It takes a village. So we're so grateful for our partners, which have allowed us to expand our reach to serve more youth in a deeper way. Becoming more common, more non-disabled people are accepting of disabled people. Um, but the truth of the matter is people with disabilities are becoming a, a very large part of our society. Well, it's important to be inclusive because the world is not just one set of people. And frequently we get kids who are taught in segregated environments. And so they're not used to being with inclusive people, both with and without disabilities, or they're only used to being with one kind of disability. And that's not how the world works. Inclusion isn't just a great idea for the people with disabilities. It's a great idea for all of us. It's about creating a program, a community, a society that is proactive in its approach to include everybody. And when everybody is included, we really all win. And what I would change to make the world a more inclusive place is just be more safety of people with disabilities. So I think getting an outside perspective has allowed us to rethink the way we 
talk about disabilities and and make sure that we're including everyone. Being a part of this training has been incredibly helpful to me, not only in exploring accessibilities to dimensions of disability that are different than my own and experiences different from my own, but also in examining accessibility that is directly um, relative to the way I experience the world that I possibly haven't thought of before. We strive to be inclusive and welcome diversity in all that we do, but this course has shown us that even though we think we do a pretty good job, we can always do better. By creating diverse and inclusive teams, um, we allow all partners at Starbucks to come to work and be their complete selves. Um, by doing so, we're able to um, better engage with our customers and better serve our communities. I just had no I idea, and no, I'm thinking of disability, not something wrong with that person, but something wrong with the environment. It's it's such a liberating experience for so many people. People in general, that I've, I've found are, are reaching out to me saying not only is it allowing them to improve their organizations and, and allowing them to reconceptualize things, so many people come to me afterwards and like, thank you, I had no idea. I never thought about this disability this way before. I never interrogate even from my own personal experiences. I'm thinking through my own personal life and experiences in a whole different way now that I hadn't before, and thank you. Wow, as I get ready to sign off this evening, this is what I want to leave you with. What does an inclusive world really look like? How do we get there? How do we make it possible? Well, I know it wouldn't be possible without the sponsors and donors who support PYD. So we want to thank these folks, Andrew and Margaret Koval, Callan Family Fund, E. Callan Fund, Van and Kimberly Gurley, TJX, Liberty Mutual, Schwabel Group LLC, Osmondahar and John Verlinden, the Boston Foundation, EY, PWC, Mark and Jill Roca, Steve and Donna Mestrocola, Corinne Basler, Spalding Rehab, CVS Help, and Special Needs Law Group, and all of our friends. Thank you also to our board of directors, planning event committee, staff, and youth participants who worked so hard to produce this night's event. And special thanks to you. We can't do it without you. And it's not too late to give and help a young person with a disability reach his or her full potential. If you have been moved by what you've seen here tonight, I know I have. I invite you to consider giving any amount that is meaningful to you. So how do you do it? Repeat after me. Click the donate button now just above this video, give.pyd.org. Text PYD to 56651 or scan the QR code on the screen with your camera app. The auction is open until May 17th at 9 p.m. And save the date, the PYD Golf Classic, October 4th at Tedesco Country Club in Marblehead, Massachusetts. It's happening. And I want you to attend our after party directly after tonight's program. You can chat with PYD staff and guests or join a music or game room. And if you didn't pre-register, it's not too late. The link to the after party is in the chat. I'll see you there.